now going to throw, but before I do that, my name is Robin Hopper. I'm a British trained potter, but I've been living in Canada for almost 50 years. I trained in London in the late 1950s, and my biggest influences at that time were two. Hans Koper was one, and the other one was um, uh, Pablo Picasso. Every year I saw an exhibition uh, by, by both of them in different galleries in London, and I was completely uh, excited about what they were doing. And they were the greatest influences I ever had. I've been in this business since I was three. I uh, found clay as a result of London bombing, and London is all built on top of clay. And when the bombs came down, the clay came up, and I had this amazing amount of non-stop material that I haven't stopped playing with for 72 years now. Um, I do a lot of different things in the work that I, I uh, produce. Most of the, the time recently it's been one of a kind work, um, often using colored clay techniques that, that go back about uh, 1500 years or so. And that's an area, um, one area that I uh, specialize in. But I've been in the business for such a long time and I think I've tried just about everything that's triable because I wanted to find out. It's an amazing medium and it has um, a history that goes well over 20,000 years. And when you look at the, the history, it's the history of mankind and all the things that he's needed to put around himself to eat from and cook in, etc., etc. And I've been really interested in all of those different aspects of what uh, ceramics, what clay is, is capable of doing and what it has been used for. So I'm in the garden here, um, and I've been a gardener for a long time. I get a lot of my ideas from the garden. Different plants, different colors, different shapes of leaves and all that. And I'm just looking for some ideas, because I want to work with slipware. And slipware, uh, there's a technique called, uh, that I call dotting. And it's wonderful, as we all see, with these little heads of yarrow here. It'll be just like the, um, the decoration on the uh, inside of a, of a series of plates that I'm working on. So this is giving me good ideas right there. The little white dots, rather like the head of the yarrow plant outside. Um, and um, just it gets a little bit more complex as I add different colors. It's very simple, very uh, beautiful process. I was in, in uh, Israel and they have a, a great culture of the use of birds in their decorative pottery. I haven't sourced out all of the reasons for it yet, but I've just been uh, you know, really interested in that sort of application so that you can you know, not steal from the other culture, but borrow the things that are salient points from that other culture. I think most people don't visualize how it can be to be doing something you love all of the time. Because the majority of people are always doing something they didn't want to get into, but it provides money. Mm -hmm. And if you can combine the two and make money and do something beautiful, um, I think that's the ultimate as far as I'm concerned. And if you can make a living having fun, it beats the hell out of making a living not having fun. How do you nurture your creative spirit? Take a walk in the garden. Right out there. Right outside the door. I, part of my uh, long-term plans when I moved out here, and I, you know, as I said, I've been around a long time, but when I moved here 36 years ago, 
um, I realize I spend most of my time in the studio. Mm -hmm. And if I can just walk out the door and get a fresh infusion of concept, ideas about color, form, and everything else, um, I can just walk back into the studio and start to realize what that was. We have a very large uh, collection of art books. Because living where we do, there's not a lot of museums and galleries, etc., to see collections that will pass through. So, um, over the years, having collected things, you can know any time you feel like you, know, you can sit down and you start thinking through and looking at some Iranian pieces or some Japanese pieces, etc., and you get ideas. Are you had said you were an art activist, and I was just one curious about what that means and what your role is as an art activist. Um, well, unfortunately, Canada uh, is not, you know, overly generous in terms of how it treats its artists, mm -hmm. and uh, I think uh, you know so much. The artists put so much back back into the community. In, in many different ways that, you know, uh, it would be better if, um, if they could be helped in some sort of way. I'm not looking at handouts, I don't think that's it. Attitudinal change, I think, is much more important. That's the idea, mm -hmm. I think, is get out there and do something. A lot of people seem to sit back and, and wait for something to happen. It doesn't work that way. You've got to make things happen. You've got to be forceful. You don't have to be forceful in the work, but you have to be forceful in getting the work out and getting people to understand what you're doing. That, I think, is probably one of the, the biggest challenges is, you know, how do you get going and, and make a living and what are the choices um, that will help you personally to, to do the best that you can. Mm -hmm. And over time, we, we realize that we prefer to sell our own work. We prefer to be able to talk to the people that come in mm -hmm. because we're the ones that made it. We know what it's about. What advice would you give someone who wants to be a career artist? A good, good education. Yeah. Too many people start out as hobbyists. Mm -hmm. And they'll take a little workshop here, a little workshop there, and they're, in a sense, copying other people. So they don't really know who they are mm -hmm. because they don't have the foundation, the fundamentals of making pots. It's a, a very complex medium. It's probably the most complex of any of the art mediums that are out there. Um, basically, it's a very interesting and demanding combination of art on the one side and science on the other. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have enough science, the art will suffer. And if you don't have enough art, the, the science will not be much use to you. I want to thank you both very much for your time today. We've really enjoyed spending time with you. Good. not much pressure. It's like cutting cheddar cheese. 